Hello, I'm Kjokan, also known as Corvus Cornix, and welcome to Classic Movie Rambles, where I talk about old movies that I found in my classroom while cleaning. This week's movie is Dread from 2012, and it's about 1 hour and 35 minutes long. And the movie starts with Dread explaining about the wasteland and the mega cities because uh, this is in the future and there's been some wars and stuff, and their humanity has basically built these mega cities that stretches, one of them stretch from Boston to New York. And uh, in these cities there are riots and gangs and all sorts of criminal activity and he, ex he basically explains what a judge is. So he is law, order and persecutionary in one person. So he's basically the law and uh, you're not supposed to be on his bad side. <clears throat> so cutting to Dread on his, on his way, doing a thing, doing his job. He chases uh, some drug dealers in a van, and the, one of the drug members in the van takes a drug called slow mo. So there's like like a really cool effect where everything gets sparkly and goes in slow motion. And what happens is the van hits a pedestrian and kills them outright, and Dredd is forced to take the van out. He shoots out the tires, and the van kind of crash, and one of the, the bad guys managed to escape. <clears throat> so he runs into a building, and Dredd chases, chases after him. And uh, the guy takes it hostage. So there's there's like a negotiation between the Dread and the uh, the uh, <laughs> the drug dealer, and Dread basically just shoots him right in the head, and that's the end of that. And then Dread goes back to HQ, and he gets uh, a new recruit called Anderson. And Anderson is basically a mutant with special powers. She can uh, I think she can read just minds, so she has like an advantage. And mutants are kind of frowned upon in this future, and uh, they're basically outcasts and misfits. So Dread puts her on a, on a test if she's really judge material. So they basically they basically she's basically supposed to pick the assignment that they're supposed to be on. And if she breaks one rule, she's not going to be a judge. So then cutting to the main bad guy taking a bath or main girl main bad girl taking a bath, <laughs> and she is also like taking this drug called slow-mo and she's lying in the bathtub and she does like this with her hand and the water kind of flows up it's really cool everything is sparkly and then she gets out of the the drug haze and she's forced to deal with some other drug dealers that have been selling drugs on her turf and she do, does this by ordering some of her men to actually skin them and throw them out for balcony because uh, the Mama gang is basically taking over this place called Peach Trees, and there, there's like a rival gangs, and they've basically been systematically taking them out one by one. So now they control the whole Peach Trees from top to bottom. <clears throat> so Anderson chooses the uh, the skin body job. So they actually goes to the Peach Trees, he, he, she and Red, and they uh, investigate the bodies, and they find out about the Mama gang. And it, this is one of the weird things because if there is like a high like criminal or someone who has actually been doing this, maybe the judges might be aware of it, but the ex excuse is, is that normally judges doesn't dare to go there to the peach trees. <clears throat> so the plan is to go from the bottom to the top, just simple as that. Uh, and then what happens is that they try to find some more evidence about the skin job, so they go into like a drug bust and they shoot some guys out and Anderson kind of uses her ability and she finds out that one of the the guys in there is actually one of those that skin the other drug dealers and throw them off the balcony. So there they take him as a hostage and then Mama is fed up with the judges and she closes down peach trees and she basically tells the people of peach trees over the intercom that I want these judges dread uh, I want these judges dead, so uh, otherwise I won't remove the lockdown because everything goes into a lockdown mode. So there's like a cool montage of action with guns and everything, and uh, I think even Dread says like they need to conserve the ammo if they're gonna reach the top, which is a pretty it's a pretty tall tower basically because Peach Trees is like a city within a city, like a huge skyscraper. It's a really cool idea, like you have shops and everything, and you have these different kind of planes really, really cool idea at least so they basically take an elevator and they get a little further up and they they get boxed into a corridor and anders and dread are forced to split up uh, <clears throat> so anderson goes with the uh the uh, apprehended uh, skinner i guess you can call him so the bad guys mount like a minigun and they start to fire at dread and they they don't care about any of the civilians or criminals living there to just make the whole worlds into like 
Swiss cheese. And uh, yeah, it's like uh, a lot of people die basically. So later, Dredd and Anderson get reunited, and uh, Dredd managed to contact H HQ until they have to stay put until backup arrives. And Dredd takes one of the drug dealers and throws him off a balcony just to for Mama to watch. Basically, it's like a scare tactic or something. And then Dredd goes to beat up the the convict or the Skinner guy to get some information, but he doesn't really get much. And uh, then. Anderson used her abilities again to break him down and they basically learned that every uh, production of slow-mo is made in peach trees so every drug every ounce of slow-mo comes from this place and then back backup arrives but the bad guys lie lied to them about a fire or something and the judges believe it and in the some commotion uh, Anderson gets grabbed by the, uh, the Skinner guy and taken to uh, as a hostage at Mama's headquarter, they take an elevator up there, and then Dread patched into the uh, the PA system of peach trees, and he talks to the pe people of peach trees, and then the bad guys move in on his location, but he used some kind of incinerated weapons to basically burn him alive, and it's really brutal, really brutal, but it's a very really really well made movie. I forget get what I'm saying. Really cool. <laughs> And then Mama calls in four corrupt judges to deal with Dredd. So this is like a really cool thing, like professionals trying to deal with other professionals. So Dredd actually meets up with one, but he's kind of suspicious. And he recognized that there's like, they sent for backup like two, but there's four there. And he takes him out basically. <clears throat> and then the, the gangsters insult Anderson and... Anderson provokes him to actually pull her gun and try to shoot her with it. But there's like a fail safe in these guns. It's like a fingerprinter ID. So it actually blows up in a bad guy's hand and she actually managed to escape. Um, so then Dredd walks into the slow-mo lab and two other corrupt judges arrive there. And he, I think he takes one of them out, but there's one left. <clears throat> and uh, Dredd actually gets shot through a wall with like armor piercing and he doesn't have a lot of ammo at this point so Anderson gets gets holed up in, a, in like a corridor and uh, there's this female uh, like judge says like well you have to come with me and Anderson reads her mind because that's what she does in every situation and she basically kills the other because she read her mind that she was mind that she was supposed to kill her so as Dredd lay almost like dying in his own blood or more or less hunched like the wall and the, the other judge walks around the corner. This is kind of a funny scene. Yeah, <laughs> the judge walks up to Dredd and Dredd just in his own blood says like, wait, uh, this is really funny coming from you, Dredd. The, I think it's called, name, this guy is called Lex or something. This is really funny coming from you, Dredd. Like you're staring death in the face and you're telling me to wait. And Dredd, Dredd just says like, it's such a funny scene. Well, just wait. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? I'm waiting for her to shoot you. And then Anderson comes <laughs> from like behind and shoot the guy. And then he basically patch himself up and he takes the bad guy's ammo and they're on their way. So Dredd and Anderson gets the code for Mama's office and they walk in there and Anderson gets shot and Mama has basically rigged up a device to her heart as like a a trigger for an explosive so if if her heart stops then the bomb detonates so dread shoots her anyway and uh, he figures out that there's like a, a range that is admitted so he pumps uh, mama full of the slow-mo stuff and throws her down the balcony and uh, he, she hits the ground and in slow motion and her skull cracks really brutal uh, and she dies of course and uh, there's no boom because it was out of range so Dredd patches Anderson up and the, the door to peach trees opens up and uh, Anderson has had enough and she knows that she failed Dredd because one of the things, you're not supposed to lose your uh, service weapon. There was one other offense I can't remember that she broke. So she was basically off the case. She can't be a judge. And then uh, Dredd's boss arrives and asks her for the, asking for the evaluation. He says like, well, she passed. So he's like, he's not a bad guy after all, he, uh, he has a heart as well, he's not all anger and all that stuff inside. So uh, the camera pans out from the city and Dredd rides off on a motorcycle, so. So what do I think about this movie? 
it's a really good movie in my opinion. It's a cool action movie and uh, it doesn't drag. It's, as I said, one hour, like 35 minutes long, so it's really cool. And it's actually uh, better than the first movie with Stallone. Somehow, Carl Urban uh, does a really good job. I mean, all you actually see of his face is like, there's like a mask cover his face and you have like, you, all you see is like the, the mouth. Uh, and you hear his voice, uh, but I, I really think he's really cool in the in that role. He just need to be like grumpy and uh, have a raspy voice and uh, just be, you know, do his thing. <laughs> That's it. So, I can definitely recommend this movie. It's really cool. So anyway, thanks for listening and or watching and take care.